Uh, we're joined again today by the CEO of Lake Resources, Steve Prominence. Steve, overnight, Europe had the Volkswagen Power Day. It's a bit, a bit like Tesla's uh, US Battery Day. So um, Volkswagen has come out and announced that it tends to build six battery factories across Europe by 2030. What are the implications for lithium production going forward? Thank you very much, Tim. Uh, it is amazing news. Uh, so previously, we've talked about the macro story. We talked about how uh, battery plants continue to increase. Between 2019 to 2020, we saw that number of gigafactories go from 70 to 181, of which 118 are in production. This adds on the top of that. So the 3.1 terawatt hours of production for 2030 that we had in, this adds another, uh, let me see, 4, 6 or 24, that adds another 0.24 terawatt hours to that. What does that mean in lithium supply? An extra six plants at 40 gigawatts each is somewhere between 190 to 220,000 tonnes of additional lithium carbonate equivalent, whether that comes as carbonate or hydroxide. So let's just say that's 200,000 tonnes. Last year production was somewhere between 285 and 310,000 tonnes. So that's two thirds of last year's production. And that's just going to one company, Volkswagen. If we look back at Tesla's battery day, they said that uh, they were going to uh, produce a 0.1 of a terawatt hour by the end of 2020 and targeting three terawatt hours all by themselves. So that was a doubling of forecast way back then. Long story short, the lithium sector has to start increasing production supply, certainly by 2024, 2025. And the increase of that, depending on which forecast you use, is anywhere from five times to 18 times more than what we did last time, uh, last year. Five times to 18 times. So we're not talking about something small, we're talking about orders of magnitude increase. And that basically means that people that are nearing production or in development at the moment are probably going to get funded. Expansions will probably occur, but not all lithium is created equal. The sorts of battery plants out of the EU want not just high quality, not just a supply agreement, but they also want an environmentally better product as well. Steve, the current average uh, pricing for China battery grade lithium carbonate uh, has recently risen to around uh, US $12,500 on market shortage. What impact do you see on the news overnight, Volkswagen Day? What impact will that have on current spot pricing? Excellent question. Okay, so the first thing that we've already seen in January, February, and now coming into March has been an understanding across the market that there will in fact be a shortfall of supply. And even though the FT came out with uh, uh, an old idea that oh, somehow the industry is going to re respond very quickly, I doubt that's going to occur. And so the response to that has been a market value of all lithium producers and developers has increased significantly. Just to put that in context, it was only in November, December, we were seeing a slight increase in pricing a lithium carbonate spot in China it was uh, ranging between six to 8,000. Now that's ranging between 12 to 13 and a half thousand dollars a ton. So that's a significant uplift. Uh, what that also means is that is a price signal to the market that we can reasonably expect to go and increase production. Uh, and that's what was missing six, nine months ago. Uh, we could see the macro story coming, more EVs, more battery plants, but there was no price signal there to actually go and increase supply. So I think that's the first thing you're going to see. And to that end, I have to say at Lake Resources, we've uh, had conversations and I'm sure it's the same across the industry. People are talking about how can you expand production? Um, when can you get that production to us? Is there a way that you can e expand that? So I think we're going to hear more and more stories about expansions and uh, more stories about how we can actually deliver into that growing market. If I could be somewhat bold though, across uh, the supply chain, we're actually not sure what's going to happen. And we could, we've been able to see a price squeeze or a bottleneck in supply somewhere around 2023 to 2025. Um, but if you add in all the most obvious projects that are going to be expanded, after about 2026, you just go, well, I have no idea where this is going to come from. 
So look, it's very good for people in the supply chain for battery materials. Now, Steve, there's currently no lithium production in Europe at present. Um, where will the Volkswagens of the world source you know, ESG-friendly lithium for their factories? It's an excellent question. Unfortunately, the uh, supply side doesn't actually have an answer to that yet. It'll be interesting to see the, uh, the progress of discussions with EV makers and battery makers over the near term. As uh, all of the listeners know, uh, most of the hard rock production comes from Western Australia. Most of the brine production comes from Chile and Argentina. But not all lithium is created equal. You have to be able to demonstrate a low CO2 footprint. And unfortunately, most of the hydroxide chain doesn't tick that box. You have to be able to demonstrate that you're not having a major water impact. And most of the brine evaporators don't tick that box. So it's going to be very interesting. There's only a few people in the direct extraction place that probably can tick those boxes but you also need to tick this, the box on scale so that you can scale up to deliver into it. Perhaps a little bit more detail on how the supply chain will be created. You know, in the US, they seem to be a little bit late to the party. You've got 1.8 million electric vehicle cars on a population of around 330 million. Europe is 3.8 million electric vehicle cars, population of 500 million. So the, the market's enormous. The government has supported the electric vehicle industry where does the supply chain participants like Lake find that support? Very interesting that to date, the, the government support and the incentives have actually gone to charging infrastructure or subsidies, uh, subsidies on electric vehicles or subsidies or assistance in building battery plants. What hasn't been dealt with yet are the cathodes and the anodes that go into those batteries. And certainly the supply of the actual battery materials, whether that's lithium or nickel, what have you. Thankfully, the export credit agencies, for example, Lake Resources is having those discussions. They're quite keen to provide debt support to some of these. And thanks to the price signaling, we're seeing more equity support to uh, increase production, but that's only going to get us some of the way there. What hasn't occurred yet is actually support to the whole supply chain. I think what that needs are alliances between EV makers, battery makers, and future production. And I think we're gonna see a lot more of that, otherwise just won't be able to deliver into this space. It's certainly good news, and it's interesting for those that don't just tick the quality box, but can also tick scalable supply with an EST benefit. Steve Prominence, always great to get your insights. Thanks for your time. Thank you, thanks for the opportunity.